everybody, I'm Allie Thompson, founder of Treasure Ministries, and this is your weekly word. When I was growing up, we would every year in school take a field trip to go see the symphony. And I really loved it because the music sounded so amazing. That live music, as every musician picked up their own instrument with such joy and began to play, not looking around at each other, but by focusing on the conductor and the notes that they were called to play. And as the conductor led that orchestra and the room was filled with such harmony, it not only brought joy that you could clearly see on the face of every person that was playing their instrument, but it brought joy to me. And the joy that I experienced from that music that echoed out into the hall brought my attention to the music itself and the conductor, not the specific person. But I wonder what would happen if a person who was playing an instrument, and let's say that they had uh, were, were supposed to play the violin, but they began to look around at the cello and wanted to play the cello instead and felt like that their instrument, the violin, wasn't that important because it looked small compared to that big cello. What if they began to try to put their violin on the floor and play it like a cello? or they tried to play those low notes that the cello was playing. Well, what would happen would not be harmony, but discord. And what I wanna to talk to you today is about jealousy and trying to be somebody we're not, and how jealousy is a tool in the hands of the enemy to teach us and to try to train us on this lie that the gifts that God has given us are not special and that the role that you and I are called to play isn't important inside of God's kingdom. Well, first of all, you and I are living in a time in our social media saturated world where jealousy is easy because in social media, we post the good things in our life and so we're showing everybody our good sides. And that can sort of create this atmosphere of jealousy as we look into the lives of others. And we can become much like that violin player that I talked about that is looking over at a cello player and thinks that the violin, because maybe it's smaller than the other instrument, is not as special. But we need to recognize, just like that instrument player of a violin, that their notes are higher and so a smaller instrument is necessary to play those higher notes and without those higher notes that beautiful harmony inside of the orchestra can't exist well you and i need to realize that god is like this amazing conductor and the bible tells us inside of our nurse scripture this week starting in ephesians 4 um, verse 7 that each of us have been given by the generosity of Jesus Christ a very special gift, a special gift. So the gifts that you and I receive from the Lord, those are special. And I wanna ask you, do you consider them special? Or are you looking around at the other gifts that he's given to others, which are going to be different from yours? and thinking that God has, what God has given them is more special than what he has given you. Well, it's just not true. Now, inside of Ephesians 4, before we begin in verse 7, the previous verses talk about the unity in the body of Christ. And then in verse 7, Paul goes on to say, However, even though you live as one, one body, one faith, right, that you've all been given a special gift, a special calling that is just tailored for you. And you're to use that gift, it goes on to say, that gift is a responsibility that you have, 
that you are called to build up in order to give out to others. But what will happen? In other words, let me go back and just say this. God is like that conductor. And we are his children. We're all in his orchestra. And he's given each of us a different instrument to play. And that's like our spiritual gift. And then the notes that he gives us to follow, that's like the pathway of our purpose. And by picking up our spiritual gift, by opening that gift, and by receiving that gift and seeing that gift as a beautiful um, gift that we can bring to the world, that we begin to play and live as God intended. And we not only ourselves experience joy, but we begin to hear that we're a part of a beautiful orchestra from God, creating this beautiful melody to share with others. However, the enemy will come in and he'll try to create discord in our life and divisiveness within the body of Christ by convincing us that our gift isn't special. In fact, sometimes inside of the church, I think that we don't share our gifts and develop them because people say that we shouldn't bring our gifts out, but that we should hide them. But nothing is further from the truth. The Bible tells us in Jeremiah 18, 6, that God is the potter and that we are the clay. And in our nurse scripture this week, it talked about the fact that Jesus is the one that gives us our spiritual gifts. And so as the potter or the conductor, he determines our spiritual gifts and he gives them to us, not based off of what we do, but just because we are his children and he invites us to play in the beautiful orchestra of life to make music, to bring him glory. But... If we look at our gift and we don't open it, then we don't use it. You see, in the book of Ephesians, in our nurse scripture, it goes on to say that that gift is a responsibility. So we receive that gift, but it's also our responsibility to use that gift to build up the body of Christ. Well, the enemy knows that he cannot steal your salvation, but he sure loves to wreak havoc in our life. He loves to create discord. And one of the ways that he does this is through jealousy, is by getting us to take our eyes off of the conductor and looking around us at what other people have or their spiritual gifts. And all of a sudden, we may be like that violin player that is looking down on her violin, wishing that she were playing a cello. You see, the answer to jealousy, the first step that we have to take, the answer to jealousy is true humility. And true humility embraces those spiritual gifts that God has given you and leans into them, looking at the conductor to use them to the fullest. And when you reach that place where you're picking up your instrument and you're comfortable with who God created you to be and you see the way that he created you, your, you know, everything about you, you see that as beautiful and special, then you won't be looking around at others wanting what they have. You see, the enemy would love nothing more than that because jealousy gets us distracted and misdirected. And we began to focus on what other people have instead of using that same energy and focus to develop the gifts that God has given us. You see, becoming the woman that God has created you to be is the greatest gift that you can give this world. But oftentimes, instead of keeping our eyes on the conductor, we have our eyes on others, wanting what other people have. And then the enemy gets us all wound up in jealousy and fear and, and not wanting to be there to support other people. And so then we don't spend time cultivating the gifts that God has given us. And oftentimes, we face those barriers 
in bringing out our spiritual gifts. And if bringing out our spiritual gifts and pouring our lives into our purpose, keeping our eyes on the conductor, if that is the remedy to jealousy, then what are practical ways we can do that? Well, the first thing is this. Understand that only your maker can give you your purpose and your spiritual gifts and tell you what you were created to do. So don't ever give that right to others. I like to say it this way. Who do you want writing your story? God or somebody else? Oftentimes, women are raised to be externally referenced, meaning we base who we are or strive to be based off of what other people say about us or what the world says about us. And when we do that, we've taken our eyes off of the conductor and we may be trying and striving to live out a dream that is not the one that God gave to us. It could be a role our parents want us to play or the world wants us to play. And, and when we do that, we let go of that special assigned task that God has given us and we don't focus in on the conductor. So number one, keep your eyes on the conductor and understand that he's got the big plan and by keeping your eyes on him, you will have all that you need to do all that God has called you to do. And people will have all kinds of ideas about what you are called to do in life, but only you can take the responsibility to allow God's words to write your story. And we do that by keeping our eyes focused on him and by listening to his voice alone. Secondly, you want to remember that there are many roles to play inside of God's uh, kingdom, just like there's many roles to play inside of an orchestra. And if you take on a role that is not yours, it will leave you worn out and weary. And oftentimes, other people may try to throw that role on you. Matthew eleven twenty eight 28 says, Jesus says, my yoke is easy. My burden is light. And oftentimes, I have found myself um, worn out and weary because I was doing maybe a good work, but it wasn't my God work. And just like everybody has a part to play in the orchestra, when we find our sweet spot, that is when harmony can begin to be produced inside of the body of Christ. Paul says it this way in the book of Ephesians from our nurse scripture this week in verse 16. He says he makes the whole body fit together perfectly. As each does its own special work, it helps other parts to grow so that the whole body is healthy and growing and full of love. And so the, the, the answer is, is that true humility says, you know, I'm not called to do it all and to be it all. I'm called to do only what God wants me to do. And by having that laser focused in our life, you and I be, can begin to live directed and not distracted. We can begin to own our calling instead of letting the outside influences own our calling. I don't know about you, but I talk to so many women and myself included, and my calendar feels claustrophobic. I want to challenge you to really go through your day and ask yourself why you're doing what you're doing. And if the motive is sh I should be doing this instead of the Holy Spirit is calling me to do this, it's got to go. And you'll know when you're playing your part in God's orchestra because nothing else will bring you joy when you are running your own race, when your eyes are on your conductor, and when you are, as Ephesians says, playing your own part. And that's the key, Paul tells us, to that harmony inside of the body of Christ. Now, the next thing is, is that a part of that is that as you operate out of that sweet spot that you have in your life, 
you want to be sure to honor that in other people's lives. In other words, just because somebody doesn't have the spiritual gifts that you do doesn't mean that you pull them down. And if you are so busy trying to do it all and be it all, you may be taking away an opportunity that somebody else is called to do. And so we want to honor that in ourselves and in others. And when we do that, when we each just relax in who God created us to be, because becoming who God created you to be is not frantically trying to strive to be someone. It's just relaxing in that place that God has called you to be. And when we all do that, in Ephesians, it says that the body of Christ is built up. And so the answer to jealousy is actually true humility. True humility produces harmony. And that harmony creates music. But in order to create this music that glorifies the conductor or the author of, of the music in place, which is the Lord himself, you and I cannot hide our purpose because when we hide our purpose or when we hide our spiritual gifts because we're afraid or because we feel like they're not as valuable and special or because somebody inside of a religious community has told us that it's selfish ambition to want to bring our spiritual gifts out, whenever we hide our spiritual gifts, it hinders God's music you have been given a gift. God will never force you to use that gift, but it's your responsibility to use it. And you know what? It's never too late in life to begin to pour into that purpose um, that God has given you. So I want to challenge you this week to seize on this opportunity to live each day like it's your last, playing that instrument, opening up your spiritual gift, and living as God intended. And when you do understand that that is the greatest gift that you can bring this world, embracing your spiritual gift and playing it to the fullest is a part of becoming the woman that God created you to be. And you know something, the Bible tells us, and inside of our nurse scripture this week, um, Paul references the fact that, that the Lord um, ascended onto heaven. And he says that because Jesus ascended into heaven, it means that he also descended um, onto earth. And basically, um, for me, that was a beautiful reminder of what my spiritual gifts are for. They're to build up the kingdom. The kingdom in eternity, God's kingdom here on earth. And that while I'm here, God has given me a gift and it's my responsibility to play at that gift with all my heart to make music so that other people can turn around and see Jesus. And so I want to invite you today to um, acknowledge that dream that God has placed in your heart to see it again as special and to pour your energy and time into just that. Take inventory over your calendar and release things that may be good works, but perhaps not your God work. And finally, make sure that your eyes are on the conductor and that you're doing what he's called you to do, and that you're living that life with laser focus by allowing God to write your story. Because only your maker can tell you who you are and the purpose for which you were created. And that is special. And when you embrace that and give that to others, that's the greatest gift that you can bring to this world. So don't get distracted by jealousy. Tell the enemy to go jump and move forward into your purpose. Yeah.